Hey guys, this is Doug again with FellowshipOfTheMartyrs.com. I'm doing a series of videos on um, how to take the battle back to the enemy. Offensive spiritual warfare. How to punch Satan in the teeth before he gets you. And uh, I want to, um, to equip and do my part uh, to empower and equip uh, as many people as possible to go push back the darkness rather than waiting for the darkness to come to you and always dealing with it defensively. Now naturally, you personally need to keep your, keep your door shut, walk in holiness, stop sinning, don't give the enemy ground, have the heart of Jesus, operate in love, but when you are equipped enough, you need to also be constantly throughout your day looking for opportunities to push back the darkness. And you can do that by speaking a word of truth, by preaching the gospel, by acting selflessly, uh, or by operating spiritually in places where that's what's necessary. So uh, my, my, my focus isn't on demons. It's certainly not being afraid of demons. We need to crush them like little bugs. When you understand how vicious, how heartless, how, how much glee they get, from getting little girls to, to kill themselves by anorexia or cut themselves or or by getting 60 year old professional responsible bankers to drive little cars with funny hats and and shoes with thingies on them looking like idiots god bless you no offense it's a demon okay it's a demon knock it off um anyway so <sighs> here's the next one And it may be more of a rant and an encouragement than an actual equipping. I don't know. We'll just see how it comes out. I'm not scripting these. I don't have time to write these all out and everything. Um, maybe somebody will transcribe them later and we'll consolidate them all into one place. But I just, I, I just want to throw at you the best I can. <clears throat> we have... We seem to all have an instinct for the honorable. We seem to all sort of know, regardless, Christian, atheist, agnostic, whatever. We seem to all know that when a fireman runs into a burning building at the risk of his own life to save a little kid, it's honorable. It's self-sacrificing. It's love. It's somehow a good thing. When, when we know, when we find out about a police officer killed in the line of duty, um, shot by bank robbers or something like that, we have a funeral miles long of cars following and, and 21 gun salute and whatever. When, when we have military uh, kids, kids that go give their lives to protect their country and, and in a righteous cause and and sacrifice in, in uh, you know uh, we honor them we fly flags at half mast and, and 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 carve monuments to them and something inside of us knows self sacrifice in this way even to your own life is really honorable and really a good thing and and uh, little kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a fireman. I want to be a police officer. Is it because of the cool uniform? Is it because they're liked? Because they're admired? Because your mom says, if you're ever in trouble, find a policeman. You'll be okay. They can be trusted. You would think that the Christians would completely outshine that. You would think that everyone would say, wow, look at the love and the self-sacrifice of that guy. That's got to be Jesus. That's amazing. That's not even like the world. That's so far beyond anything I've ever seen. That's got to be Jesus. That's what John 17 says, that when we are one, as he and the Father are one, then the world will know that Jesus is real. They can't deny, because... For us to be one that much, 
to be that self-sacrificing, that loving, that overwhelmingly, here's my stuff, here's my keys, here's my kid, take whatever, God bless you, I love you, that's freakish. And they will have to acknowledge that it's supernatural. It is the best evangelism method ever. And it came right out of the mouth of Jesus. He didn't say, go quote him the Ten Commandments and ask him if they've ever told a lie or ever sinned or whatever. He said, when you are one, as I and the Father are one, they will know that the Father sent Jesus. At the Lord's Supper, at the, at the Last Supper, he said, a new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. Do you have any concept of how hard that is? Do you have any idea of how far away from that we are? <clears throat> Why don't mothers say to their little kids, if you're ever in trouble, find a televangelist and you'll be safe. If you're ever in trouble, find a guy with a black robe and a little white thing right here and you'll be safe. Why, why can't we say, go find a priest and everything will be safe? Well, because we're not entirely sure the priests are safe with our little kids. We're not entirely sure the televangelists are, are not snake oil salesmen. We're not entirely sure, but, but a fireman will be okay. Let me ask you, when a fireman dies in the line of duty, does anybody say, what was his doctrine about how to climb the ladder? Um, are, are you sure that he was wearing his, his hat on the right direction? Are, did he follow protocol in every way according to the book? Because if not, then, then he's a heretic and apostate firefighter and we're not going to honor his sacrifice and his death. We, we can't be part of that. We can't put him on the plaque if he didn't agree with us on every jot and tittle before he sacrificed to save that little kid. You know, can you imagine when a, when a, when a police officer dies or, or was shot in the line of duty and they said, well, let's see, um, are you a Republican? Are you white? Uh, do you agree with us on this and this and this? Because otherwise we're not going to pay for your benefits. We're, we can't help you, you know, whatever. Yo, it was a righteous shoot. Yeah, and it was kind of nice what you did, but yeah, no, we're going to we're going to have to you know, let you die on the operating table because you didn't agree with us on everything. How insane is that? But we got missionaries that we send out to foreign countries that won't talk to the other missionaries. We got people that want to go be missionaries, but nobody will send them because they don't agree with us on everything. They got a heart for the poor. They're called by God. They're committed to go, and nobody will send them because the paperwork's not right. Because they don't they don't have everything that we think they ought to have. And we don't trust God to give it to them. We have to give it to them ourselves. Why don't we think pastors, priests, whatever, are as honorable, as trustworthy, as as sacrificial as firefighters. Pastor, I'm asking you, do the people in your town believe that if there's an emergency, they can call you and you will help? No matter what it is, no matter what time of night. Pastor, or do you have an unlisted phone number? Do you have secretaries? Do you have teams of people that handle all the problems so that you don't have to get your hands dirty with the masses. Pastor? Pastor, how have you hurt or helped the reputation of God's people as self-sacrificing and loving? How is it that we honor We honor someone that goes six months at a time to serve on a submarine away from their family uh, to, to protect the country. And they're on a nuclear submarine for six months at a time, maybe sending an email or something like that, but mostly not seeing their family, not parenting their kids, not being around, 
and that's beautiful and that's that's service to the country and honorable and that's great and whatever but if you want to go be a missionary and leave your family behind God would never call you to do that God would never have you sacrifice in that way how come Jim Elliott and the other guys uh, from the point of the spear movie the missionaries that died down in South America they flew into a village that they knew was tremendously hostile everybody knew the, these guys are these are bad dudes they will eat you kill you whatever they you whatever they went and landed there to preach them the gospel and beforehand they told their family we believe God's calling us to do this but we may not come back and they went in obedience to the Lord, left their children fatherless, were all murdered, left their wives husbandless, and somehow it's an honorable act. How can that be? Didn't they just put God ahead of family? Didn't they understand that, that they were risking their children growing up without a father? So that this tribe of vicious people that no other tribe even around there wanted to talk to them. They were so mean. How can, didn't they put ministry above God? I mean, didn't they put ministry above family? How can you justify that? Well, because at the end, you see that the families kept working and working and working with that tribe, and that tribe repented and acknowledged, yeah, we killed them, and we're really sorry. And the sons of some of those missionaries ended up adopting them as their dads, the, 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 the guys in the village. And they come to Christ, and it's beautiful. And we say, oh, see, it was worth it. Souls got saved. It was a good thing. Well, you don't know whether that was going to happen or not. The question is, could God call you to do something so self-sacrificing and so loving that it shocks the world, that it humbles firemen and police officers and guys on nuclear subs, that they look at you and go, I'm not that Jesus-like. I should be, but I'm not. I'll run into a building and save a kid. But what that guy did, what that guy sacrificed and gave up, I'm not even there without Jesus. That requires something supernatural. Okay, you pray to be that guy, you pray to be like that, you pray to have the Lord do whatever you have to do to you and put you in circumstances to be that self-sacrificing, you're going to kick Satan in the teeth. He is going to know your name and hate you. And it's going to push back the darkness and make a difference. And I'm not talking about your pride or building your reputation or whatever. I'm not talking about building you up. I'm talking about how do we push back the darkness. And the way we push back the darkness is by obeying the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord says, love one another as I have loved you. How much did he love us? Enough to get on the cross, take on our sins, and die. That's more than just feeding you. That's more than just sharing with you out of the bag to care for the poor. That's more than just praying for you and, and letting the power of God, the virtue that was in him, flow into you to heal you. That was all self-sacrificing. But he was way past that. I want to bear your burdens. I want to share in your suffering. I want to cry alongside of you. I want to stand with you in times of trouble forever. Communion, sharing a cup, drinking his blood, in, in, on, one, on one spiral, in one way of looking at it, is a blood oath. Just like you would cut your hand and, and be blood brothers with somebody and say, whatever I have is yours. If your village needs me, I'll come. If you die, I'll take care of your wife and your kids. Whatever it takes. Jesus made a blood covenant with us, made us blood brothers, joint heirs, adopted, engrafted, and said, whatever I have is yours. And we have nothing. Why would he, king of the universe, creator of everything, want to be blood brothers with me and I have nothing but evil? I have nothing but sin and self and flesh and ugliness, and he wants to give me everything he's got in exchange for what I've got?
that's totally unlike the world. That's unrecognizable as a man. Yeah. Okay, so how do you kick Satan in the teeth? I'm not sure what the exact mechanism will be for you, but ask the Lord to put you in a situation to do something so honorable, so glorious, so not like the world, so self-sacrificing, that all the darkness will flee. And that the light of Christ will shine out of you and everyone will see it. And if you do it for your glory, it's going to go bad. You can't hide it. You can't put it under a bushel. The world will see. That was honorable. Just like Stephen getting stoned. The first martyr in front of everybody. Paul was holding the coats of the people that were stoning him. It wasn't hidden. It was bold and it was loud. And it was speaking the truth of the gospel as you're getting stoned. Until they stone you and while they're stoning you, no matter what the cost, this needs saying. And I'm going to say it right now. I, I would like to see us raise up a group of people that were so recognizable, that were so universally holy, so universally humble, self-sacrificing, loving, whatever, that every mother would say to her kid, never mind the police officer and the firefighters, if you're in trouble, find one of those. Because I know they're not taking money on the side from drug dealers. I know that they're not going to touch you or lift your skirt up. I know those people, those Christians, those Jesus lovers, that group there, they are absolutely going to do the right thing, even if it costs them their life. I mean, why aren't we already there? How hard could it be? In... Why isn't it already that way? Why aren't you already like that? I pray the Lord would make a way and give you the strength and fill you with enough of Him that it would shine out and everybody would see it. And whether you like it or not, you would do the right thing in a crisis. Thanks for listening. More at fellowshipofthemartyrs.com.